Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar series on IoT. My name is Akhil Sharawat. I am an executive trainer with Vice Education. Today's webinar is on building IoT components for IoT applications. Today we will see how we build different IoT components and how we can use them for different IoT applications. From the previous webinar on building IoT dev kit image, you have seen about IoT dev kit its physical significance, different components associated with IoT DevKit, and how we build IoT DevKit image in our SD card. So this webinar is continuation to the previous webinar. So today we will discuss various components of IoT, in which we will see different hardware supports and software supports that are provided by our IoT. LibMRA and IoT Cloud Agent these two are the library supports that are provided by our IoT. Importing IoT libraries in Arduino, how we can import various IoT libraries in our Intel Arduino IDE. Configuring Intel Centrino, how we can connect our Intel Centrino to our Galileo board and how we can access it using various command lines. Wi-Fi driver installation, how we can install various Wi-Fi drivers to our Intel Galileo and access them using various Wi-Fi cards. Along with that, we will see various applications of IoT. Now let us start with various components of IoT. IoT provides us with the hardware support and software support. In hardware support, it provides us with various Wi-Fi cards. These Wi-Fi cards can provide our Galileo board with Wi-Fi connectivity. Some of these Wi-Fi cards are advanced enough that they can provide us with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. If we flip our Galileo board, then we will see a mini PCI slot available there where we can actually insert our Wi-Fi card to provide our Galileo board with Wi-Fi connectivity and Bluetooth connectivity. Now software support. IoT Dev Kit is the development kit type commonly known as Yocto Linux or Debian Linux. It is used for various IoT applications and it can provide us with various library supports. Two of the famous library supports that it provides us are LibMRA and IoT Cloud Agent. In the figure shown below, if we have a Yocto based Linux operating system image with us, then we can have access to various libraries libmra and iot cloud agent along with that we have api bindings for c c plus plus node java and python let's discuss about the different libraries libmra libmra is a c c plus plus library with bindings to java python and javascript to interface with the input output on galileo with a structured API where port names or numberings matches the board. If we have a libmra library support with us, then we can bind various C, C++ libraries to Java, Python and JavaScript and actually we can interface them with the input and output ports on our Galileo board. In the table shown below, we will see different C API modules and C++ API classes. In C API modules, we have GPIO, I2C, AIO, PWM, SPI, UART and Common. In C++ API classes, we have GPIO class, I2C class, AIO class, PWM class, API class, UART class and Common. Now let's discuss about these modules. First is a GPIO. GPIO is the general purpose input output interface to libmra. It can use GPIO libraries that can be exported via a kernel module or memory mapped depending on the board configuration. If we want to access a GPI module which is a general purpose input output interface then we can actually export them from the kernel module or we can directly map them depending on our board configuration, I2C. An I2C represents a master on an I2C bus that communicate to multiple I2C slaves by configuring the address. It is considered that the address is correct before doing any calls on I2C. Multiple instances of the same bus can exist. In I2C, we have a master 
and this master communicates to various i2c slaves using i2c bus by configuring the address these addresses are always correct before the master makes the call for communicating to any slave on our galileo board for i2c we have io18 and io19 io18 will act as a data line while io19 will act as a i2c clock moving further aio aio is the analog input and output interface to lev mra it is used to read or set the voltage applied to an aio pin we can actually read or set various voltages that we apply to these aio pins pwm pwm is the pulse width modulation interface to lev mra it allows the generation of a signal on a pin if we access pwm pin modules in our lib mra then we can generate various signals on these pwm pins on our galileo board we have pin number 3 5 6 9 10 and 11 reserved for pwm common this defines the basic shared values of lib mra spi this file defines the spi interface to lib mra a spi object in lib mra represents a spi dev device linux spi dev devices are created per spi bus and every chip select available on that bus has another spi dev file if we want to access spi module on our lib mra then we have an spi object that is provided by us by lib mra library which is known as spi dev device on our galileo board we have io11 io12 and io13 which will act as master out slave in master in slave out and spi clock respectively uart uart is the asynchronous receiver transmitter interface to lib mra it allows the exposure of uart pins on board our lib mra provides us with various uart pins which are available on our board provide communication between different modules to our galileo board we have two uart on board uart 0 and uart 1 io 0 io 1 are reserved for receiver and transmitter respectively for uart 0 while io 0 and io 3 are reserved for tx and rx respectively for uart 1 moving on to second library that is iot cloud agent iot cloud agent provides the support for enabling the device connectivity and send observations using command line if we access iot cloud agent then it provides us with various connectivities to our galileo board and these connectivities can be observed using command lines IoT Cloud Agent has IoT Kit Admin and IoT Kit Agent. IoT Kit Admin it is a command line wafer for the REST API enabling us to test connectivity, activate a device, register time series and send observation all from the command line. If we access IoT Kit Admin then we can actually activate our device. We can register different time series and actually send different observations using the command lines in iot kit admin moving on to iot kit agent agent is intended to run as a service the agent will add security token add a timestamp convert temp to the component id and send a post over ssl to the cloud server if we access iot kit agent then we can actually provide security to our board for a various iot applications now how we can import various iot libraries to our intel arduino id our intel galileo provides various library supports here we have taken an example of iot kit agent master library which we want to import in our intel arduino id first we will save this library from intel site to our device then we extract that library we open our intel arduino id we go to sketch then to import library and we select add library when we add library then a dialog box will open from where 
we actually navigate IoT Kit Agent Master where we have export archive folder from there we will open that particular library once we open it then our library is exported and we will get a confirmation message as library added to your libraries check import library menu from library import menu we can actually see what library we have imported thus we can actually add our iot library to our intel arduino id and we can use it for various iot applications now moving further let's discuss about configuring intel centrino first what is an intel centrino intel centrino is a wi-fi card with ability to provide wireless connectivities to the intel galileo board the wi-fi card that we will discuss is intel centrino advance n6235 that has a dual stream to cross to dual band wi-fi plus bluetooth 4.0 with wi-fi direct the intel centrino advance n6235 delivers up to 300 mbps speed this wi-fi card can be used for business or home data intensive apps streaming of hd videos gaming and networking heavy traffic and large area Wi-Fi environments. So our Intel Centrino is basically a Wi-Fi card. If we talk about N6235 Intel Centrino, then it will provide us with dual band and Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth connectivity with a Wi-Fi direct. It provides us with a speed of 300 Mbps and we can actually use it in heavy traffic and large areas of Wi-Fi environments. The Wi-Fi card that we used is always placed on the mini PCI slot that is behind our Galileo board. When Intel Centrino Wi-Fi card is connected to our Galileo board, then we can connect our FTDI cable through which we can access the different Linux commands to activate this Wi-Fi module. In this figure, it's shown how we can insert our Wi-Fi card to the mini PCI slot. And then we connect the FTDI cable to activate our Intel Centrino using different commands. Now we will see various commands for activating our Intel Centrino. First is to verify the Wi-Fi driver. For that we have a command lspci space hyphen k slash space grep space hyphen caps a space 3 space hyphen i space network using this command we can actually see whether our wi-fi driver is installed in our galileo or not after checking that we will enter into the conman control in that we will actually write various commands through which we can activate and connect our intel centrino to the wi-fi available to that particular area when we enter into the conman control we need to enable our wi-fi for that we use command enable wi-fi then a message will come enabled wi-fi indicating that our wi-fi is enabled once our wi-fi is enabled we will scan for various wi-fi's for that we have a command scan wi-fi once the scan is complete then a confirmation will come saying scan complete for Wi-Fi indicating that our Intel Centrino has scanned various Wi-Fi's that are available in the particular area after scanning we will see what are the different services available in that particular area for that we have a command services once we write the services then we will actually see a various Wi-Fi networks available in that particular area here there are few Wi-Fi's that are available in that particular area now we want to connect our Intel Centrino to one of these Wi-Fi's for that first we need to register our agent we use the command agent on then a confirmation message will come saying our agent is registered once we register our agent then we need to connect our Intel Centrino to that particular Wi-Fi 
network. Suppose we want to connect our Intel Centrino to MINC. For that we use the command connect and in front of the connect command we write the address of that particular Wi-Fi which we want to connect. We select the address of that particular Wi-Fi and right click on our mouse then automatically it will come in front of our connect command. We press enter and wait for a while. Then it will show a passphrase. Passphrase is nothing but the Wi-Fi password of that particular Wi-Fi. In our case, it is the password for MINC. We enter the password and then we wait for a while until we'll see link become ready. The moment we will see link become ready, then our Intel Centrino is connected to that particular Wi-Fi network. For checking that, we come out of Conman control and we ping google.com. Once we ping, then we will start receiving different bytes and their times, indicating that our Intel Centrino or our Galileo is connected to that particular Wi-Fi network. And we can perform a various IoT applications by connecting our Galileo to the internet or to the Wi-Fi. Now we will see how we can install various Wi-Fi drivers to our Intel Galileo. In the previous slides, we see the command for Wi-Fi driver. We use the same command here for checking the Wi-Fi drivers. If the Wi-Fi driver is not available, then here is a link from where we can install that particular Wi-Fi driver. When we go to this link, then we will go to Intel site from where we can install the Wi-Fi drivers. When we install this Wi-Fi driver, we will install the archive file. This is the Wi-Fi driver that we have downloaded from the link given in the previous slides. We actually copy and paste this archive Wi-Fi driver directly to our SD root directory. Once the driver is installed, then we connect the Wi-Fi card and access it by using the various commands that we have seen in previous slides. And we can perform various IoT applications. Once our Wi-Fi card is connected to the Wi-Fi, then it will provide the Wi-Fi access to our Intel Galileo. Using that, we can actually perform various IoT applications. I hope you have learned a lot from this webinar. These are few references that you can refer for the data. You can also contact us at Foundation for Innovation and Collaborative Education. You can mail us on info at fic.in or mentor at fic.in or you can log on to our site www.fice.in. Thank you.